comments scrolling by every now time. that's what i'm i'm getting i was getting it but now that's what i'm getting too <clears throat> so it's like i don't know if it's showing me every person who's sort of throwing a comment up but uh everyone uh it's, it's uh, uh jamie from uh, code orange the band code orange who has come <laughs> on here and uh, they've just dropped their new record underneath yeah yeah we have it's just come out and we're going to have a conversation about that amongst other things as, as well i think um the fucking coronavirus <laughs> Okay, well, since you already mentioned it, um, yeah. it you know, I, I, I've done a, a, a video about this in terms of the impact on South by Southwest recently, but that was like really on the, uh, at, at, at the very start of everyone in the music industry kind of reacting to this. Now, like, uh, you know, everyone's favorite bands and artists are uh, canceling their tours left and right and, you know, uh, festivals like Coachella are pushing things back or just canceling outright. I mean, you know, as, as a musician, as someone who, you know, we know in the music industry, a great deal of revenue is generated just through live performances. Um, you know, someone in your position, what's, what's your reaction to this and sort of like, what's the plan or sort of the hopes going forward? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's again, everyone, it seems like the type of thing everyone's going to be affected. So you don't want to be the one, you know, complaining about music. But yeah. at the end of the day, we're fucked for sure. We're trying to figure stuff out. Uh, I think today we'll have something announced. We have what I would call a little bit of a solution that I think will be pretty cool. But uh, yeah, like everything's it's been hell. It's been really hard to figure out. And what what sucks, I guess, for us in this scenario, which again, I'm not trying to it's it sucks for everybody so whatever but we've been seriously working hard we've been off the road for like a while just working on this record every single day practicing we've played this set we were planning on playing like 50 times we're like avid to just practicers do the set over and over and over so mm -hmm. you know we were ready man we're we're so now it's kind of like the rugs being pulled out and today we, we're really looking forward to today to today just because you know uh, the obvious reasons we've just been building towards this day ready to have like a day of like relief like you know what whatever happens it's out in the world we feel great about it let's like enjoy that day and now it's just like stress and chaos and it's there's no none of that so whatever well i mean i i could i could at least say from my perspective and, and i appreciate that you know you're you, that you're toughing it out and you personally feel like you know uh, stiff upper lip and you want to be less likely to complain or you know sort of like put that in front of in front of your audience or anything but this is a pretty huge deal i mean especially yeah. for musicians and content creators of all stripes who you know those who are on the more independent side i mean not only are you relying on touring revenue to make ends meet but you know again independent content creators notoriously underinsured as far as health insurance too because oh yeah like it's not like you signed to the label and the label's like, oh, yeah, and here's your health care plan. You know no, I mean? when you sign to the <laughs> label, like well, especially a band like us, I mean, who are more, definitely more fortunate than some bands, but when you sign to the label, there, there's nothing. Yeah. We, we, and even for us, like, we, Roadrunner is, has been awesome towards us and gave us a great budget, but every single dime of that budget went towards this record. We were trying to make this record as technologically advanced as possible, work with different people, you know, work and just get new. A lot of it was just getting new gear to be able to facilitate the stuff we were doing. So we weren't pocketing that money. So we've, we've pretty much been living off like, you know, the last tour cycles money and that's it. And that's gone. So, I mean, again, like it's, it's, it is what it is. I've been talking to my friends and bands and, I don't know. In a way, I feel like we were kind of lucky in one way because I'm trying to look at it positive. It's like we got this out there today. If this was next week, I don't think this is getting out there. I mean, yeah. I'm sure people will figure out in the next couple months how to keep putting out music and stuff. But again, we're on a major label. So unless we were going to go rogue and just upload it ourselves, which honestly, at this point, we probably would have if, if we had you know no choice. It, who I don't know if it would ever get out there. So I'm just happy it's out there. Uh, it's, I feel like it's timely to the situation. A lot of the record is about this overcrowded, overconnected, but underconnected world, you know, because that's what we're in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so it feels timely in like a sad way. Like we were, we were <clears throat> back this yesterday and I was just like, God damn, this is fucking depressing as shit, but whatever. <laughs> Gotta keep going. So, 
well if there's if there's any way to sort of figure this out or uh uh, make the technicals of it happen, something that could be that, that I've been thinking about and maybe saying to other people who I know behind the scenes, something that might be a potential answer is, you know, at least for the short term, figure out some, like, Twitch simulcasts of, like, well, you know, high performance on Twitch. Code's on get, it. Get some fans to donate that way. We're on it, and you're going to hear something about it. I don't want to I, – I, I'm writing something out that is long, and we don't normally write long-form stuff out really explaining ourselves because, to be honest, I'm not – I've never been, it, there's so many, there's so much now that for us, and we sometimes get shit for this, but for us, we like to just keep it really direct about the the themes of, of the record, the vibe. We don't get into, oh, we're doing this or eating this or whatever. So, but I need to explain, I feel. So I'm writing something out to explain, but we're going to do something. I think it's going to be, obviously it's depressing, but what we're planning on doing it's going to be cool. And I think it'll open the doors for everyone who's maybe thinking about what you're saying. And that's what we're going to do. So, okay. So, uh, so let's move on to the record since that's just out. And you just mentioned that a little bit, uh, because you kind of teased toward it, let's open up, uh, what exactly went into this album that in your opinion, makes it more futuristic or technologically advanced. I mean, I've, I've gotten that impression from the single so far and, uh, you know, from the last record, it, I've, I've continued to have the impression that, you know, you guys are a very forward-thinking band, and uh, what exactly have you guys been doing with this new LP to kind of keep pushing that forward? Yeah, I mean, the way I wanted to think about it was there. there's kind of two ends to that. It's like, thematically, I wanted to make a record that was about the time we're living in, about social media, about this device we're talking to each other on, but without it being... The, what I kind of see as like stereotypical, you know, they're listening to us, they're watching us, or this is this horrible thing that sucks and we need to get rid of it and go back to. So I was trying to find the balance of taking each song kind of going through someone's emotional journey of instead of maybe pointing the finger at social media or phones or the, the digital age kind of having to look at themselves and the way they present themselves and the way that affects other people and the cycle that that creates when you're presenting yourself maybe you're presenting yourself a certain way and that's not reality and someone's basing their reality off of that that non-reality and that's maybe you know the chain that kind of creates then that sonically we're always trying to push forward. We just love all kinds of music. And obviously, we love hardcore and metal and industrial music. But we also really love hip-hop and electronic music and modern production, you know. And just modern production is probably the biggest influence on this record. Even in, even in film scoring or whatever, you know. Make things kind of cutting through and, and uh, jumping out at you. You know, I feel a lot of times like metal and heavy music is like a beautiful, like one sheet, you know, art piece. You know, it's like a, a piece of paper and it can be amazing. But other kinds of music reach out at you more the way that media does now. It jumps out of that box. And because of the way a band is recorded and uh, the, the sonics of fitting all the stuff that a band needs to fit in order to sound real... It makes it hard to do that, but that was like a big inspiration is hearing other kinds of music, hearing uh, what hip hop's doing right now and trying to keep the soul of metal and hardcore and hard music and, and, and that energy and pair it with the new production style and, and try to push heavy music forward. And at the same time, not, you know, try to make the best song we could every single time. So obviously that's what everyone's trying to do, but song wise but yeah generally do you feel that there is like a bit of an unwillingness in the metal scene to embrace the kind of ideas that you're putting out there right now i mean it seems like rather than trying to keep up with the times a lot of bands and artists would rather rather just put out something that's like kind of nostalgic or kind of throwing it back to 90s extreme genres like black metal or death metal and just trying to keep it like as basic and 
um, you know, unmessed with as possible, which I, I think, I think is fine in, in a certain dose. You know what I mean? I mean, there are I agree. great groups out there that have a very classic sound. Totally. It seems like, you know, that that's kind of generally the theme that everyone's sticking with. And, and look, I understand the value of like, hey, maybe we shouldn't jump on every wave that pops out there because, you know, that then you, in a way you kind of end up with, you know, a lot of bad new metal and rap metal that ages oh, terribly over the decades. You know that was the I next mean? thing I was like, going to say. It's like, yeah, like some, I... some good stuff came yeah. out of there, but there's like a lot of terrible stuff that came out of that era. But uh, and you know, now it's, and it sort now of seems like, but also that. rejecting that it's, it's, you know, also comes with the price. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And yeah, I to, to both those points to the latter point, I feel like, yeah, a lot of people are seeing the connection that I see between hip hop and and heavy music metal now is really not based on rapping, you know that. And that's yeah. that's even though I love rap and love all kind, you know. But I feel yes, that's super been done to me. It's super lame. I don't want to hear it at all. There's a lot of artists trying to do that now, uh, and I think I think they they're trying to. You know, I, they, they see this thing, hip-hop, which has taken over the world, and it's the number one thing, and they love it probably, genuinely. I don't think it's coming from, like, a negative place, uh, or, like, not a negative place, but coming from, like, you know, some type of vapid, whatever. I, I just think that's the connection they see. What I kind of see is, again, on the production side, on the thought, the way of pushing things forward, just to use a couple examples I use a lot because I just love them, but JPEG Mafia, who I've been talking to, you know, for a couple years. Injury Reserve, again, uh, Clipping just put that record out. There's tons of hip hop that does feel new. It's it's like what, what you can compare it to this, that, and, and the other, but it's different. It's new. It's a different mix. And to me, the key for heavy music, again, I love, and, and people make fun of us for and, and talk shit in this world. Of course, we love like, not, you know, 90, all kinds of 90s metal and and alternative and there's things like that that creep into our sound the same way every era the 30 years prior or 20 years prior you know it's it's there's a lot of repeats from that time historically in music constantly uh but my goal was like okay how do we take all these different things and put them in a different melting pot so that it comes out different so it's you know maybe it's a thing it's definitely things that have been done in some ways of course but it when it's put together, it hasn't all been done together, you know? So I feel like that would be yeah. the key if you were trying to do that. And some people aren't. It's like some people just make awesome renditions of what they like. And that doesn't, that just doesn't, you know, excite us. It's not what we want. We want, it, keep our, it keeps our engine forward, going forward, even if we're whatever, delusional or idiots or whatever, it keeps our engine going forward to feel like, okay, we're trying to do something different. We see this and that, and we want to push it forward. We that's we want to push it forward. That's that's what keeps us keeps the fire under us. So, you know, I just it's not exciting to me to do it any other way. But yeah, I don't see a ton of I don't think that drives a ton of metal and rock currently. And it is what it is. I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, the the era of hip hop that you guys are borrowing from is a totally different. It's it's a new landscape. I mean. Yeah. The traditional rules of what would usually be understood to be a good hip hop song no longer apply. Um, the genre is so much more aesthetically focused than it used to be. And on top of it, uh, like you said, you know, groups like Clipping, artists like JPEG Mafia, there are way more artists out there with a lot of relevancy who are willing to make tons of concessions to experimental music mm -hmm. um, and, you know, sort of bending that in totally new and exciting ways. It's a totally new frontier. Why wouldn't you want to borrow from it? It's like, you know, like it's, it's, it's ripe, me, ripe with a crazy, you know, crazy and exciting ideas. Yeah. And to me, it's not even like, to me, I totally agree with you, but I won't, I, I just see it as like, that's what's going on in our time. And mm -hmm. I, and again, I, you know, I taught, I taught the coolest part was years ago, three, maybe it's like three years ago at this point, talking to JPEG Mafia on the phone because he was a fan of us, you yeah. know, and talking to Injury Reserve and they said the same thing. You're this, this shit like inspired us in this kind of way, which I was just like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? But when I listened to it, I could see the connection. And I, in, in a lot of ways, yeah, they were there and they're totally pushing and 
we were tr we have always been trying to push whether we got it right or get it wrong we're trying to throw to the things we love but we've always in our hearts and in our music been trying to push with the tools we have a lot of it was we needed to grow as musicians as songwriters as people learn how to use learn how to utilize this modern technology and get good at it the way that these guys are and couple that with know how to play and make sure the hardness stays make sure there's choruses the way that we love hearing choruses in rock and metal we don't want it to be we, we love the experimental aspect but equally important to us is like something that sticks with you you know and or uh, that hard part that gives you that cathartic release and i feel like with metal and like hardcore a lot of times when it goes artistic you lose that and 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 that's cool and i like that you know a lot of like bands that came out of that metalcore scene to have records that lean more artistic and those are totally inspiring records but the hard parts or even like the mosh parts or whatever you want to call it hmm. go because honestly like for instance on this record those parts are some of the hardest parts to keep interesting. There's only so many tools you can use. They've been done a million times. Every single mosh part on this record, hard riff, was thought over and thought over and pawned over and thought over until we could try to make it the most fun, exciting, hard, and unique thing that it could be. That was the goal every time. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I, it's, I feel it's like so that's hard part. It's so funny hearing you try to explain it because it is such it is such a basic concept that's hard to sort of put complex words to because it's such yeah. a simple thing. And okay. because it because it's so simple, that makes it even harder to make it more extreme or make it feel different or feel unique to the listener because it's like every time it's like you're reinventing the wheel. And it's like how you know, it's the wheel. How are you really going to like and it's just a stupid feel. concept. Like, a yeah. mosh part is a stupid concept. I fucking love that shit. At the yeah. end of the day, I love it. I don't love every single one. Most of the ones I hear now make me physically sick and make me want to just leave. Like, yeah, it's, 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 it, yeah, it's a cliche, and you're trying to, like, do the same thing but make it not feel cliche. Dude, 100%. Like, I'm, uh, when you know, I'm, I'm in the pit. I'm to fucking that the saddest day converge pit. <laughs> And my phone just flies out and I lose that shit, you know, when I'm whatever. I love that. I love, I love, we toured with Hatebreed. I fucking, we love yeah. that. Some of our first, the first bands who brought us on tour, even when we were really out there and didn't really totally have a scene to fit into, were Madball and Terror. And these bands that honestly treated us really well. And we learned so much of the energy from them. And every time I die. And so, I mean, we... Uh, we want that was the concoction it's like how can we keep that element how can we push things forward how can we it's, it's this tightrope we're always trying to walk and trying to suit all these different things and that's why for some people it's going to be complete garbage which i completely understand i understand but every second over of it on our end was pawned over was looked at with a microscope to make it exactly what we want to hear the exact combination of elements that we wanted to hear and bring our own flavor to it you know you know, what, something you just said about not fitting into a scene brings up kind of another characteristic of the band that I wanted to talk about, and that's that I, I see Code Orange as being a part of a new generation of groups, and this is a bit of a growth trend who uh, rock and metal groups that are incorporating so many different genres into their repertoire and into their sound, many of which trended for a long time or a short time through the 90s and 2000s, and... Uh, a lot of these sounds back then, typically you wouldn't hear all of them on one record or you wouldn't hear all of them from one, one artist. You know, you guys mm -hmm. are sounds that typically back in the day you would get from five, six, seven, eight different artists from a load of different records. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what exactly is kind of the creative process with kind of cherry picking all of these various ideas from the past, you know, 20 years or so, turning them into your own and kind of concocting them in a way where they're all harmonizing on, on the same release? The harmonizing and, and and making it fit, like, to me, it's like a puzzle. And, and a big part of that puzzle is what the story we're trying to tell, the ups and downs in the record. We very much look at the records, especially the last one and this one, almost like movies or something, where I want there to be ups and, and you know, emotional highs and lows and <clears throat> scares. And it, I want it to make you feel throughout the whole thing. So that's a huge part of it we're not you know the process isn't uh 
let's try to cram as much in as possible. It's just how do we take these things that we like and 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 fit them, you know, and 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 make it sound new and not make it sound like a throwback. Make it sound yeah. So there maybe there, there's parts this could sound like this and that sounds like this, but the whole picture is different. And yeah, that process took a very very long time. I'm not, I'm fucking not lying when I say we have worked on some aspect of this record for twelve. 15, 20, 10 hours a day for two years, nonstop. It started with making 16 demos, laptop style, all guitars direct in, programming the drums, doing all the programming, hundreds of tracks, mixing it ourselves, doing all the headphone stuff in our own mix so that basically we could take that and go to someone however months, months later and say, you know, this is the blueprint. This is what we want to do exactly don't want it touched. All we want to do is elevate it. And we're totally open to ideas to elevate it. We want it to sound bigger. We want the band parts to sound like a real fucking band. We want the parts that aren't supposed to sound like that, that are supposed to be surreal and digitized to feel that way. And then we want to blend the middle so there's a lot of gray area and you don't know what the fuck's real, what the fuck's fake, you know? So, Put your mind, you that, decree. Your record is, is a great approach to come together with what's essentially a first draft. And then yes. this is exactly what we want to do. Because look, going that route, you're going to waste way less time and way more and way less money in the studio uh, by coming together with a clear idea of what you want to do, and you just want to do an improvement from there. And then we still, because we're psychotic, waste it all the time and all the money in the studio. <laughs> and, but and but you're, look, it, you're still you're still going to spend a ton of time in the studio anyway. Yeah, for us. I but, mean, but, but, I but, know, you, but you want to spend that time improving. You don't want to spend that time figuring out the basics. Yeah, exactly. We, 100%. That's it right there. We, there's no way this record would have been done if we did not spend all that time just doing that. And then going to our guy, Will, who had recorded the vocals and the electronics for forever. So the way we did forever was, was almost, we recorded all the band stuff with Kurt Ballou, didn't tell him anything that was going on, went and recorded yeah. all the electronics and vocals, brought it back to him. He freaked the fuck out and was like, what the fuck is this? You made another record. <laughs> and then we spent a long time trying to make it work and it worked and I'm really proud of it. But I think we weren't communicative in that process and we were, and we're always learning. So going into this record it was like, we need to build this like something you can stand inside, like an orchestra of music, it, the electronics and everything have to all be built all together. So every song going in is, you know, a couple hundred tracks. It's not, it's not like, let's do the band and then we'll pepper on in electronics. Everything was built together. You know, because the goal was to make like it be this environment that you could kind of live inside of, you know, or so it feels like it surrounds you. So you feel like if, and if you add, just add electronics on top of a band, the way that I feel like a lot of bands have done and I love. And again, I would consider sometimes that more like industrial metal in a lot of ways, which is like a band and electronics not on top, but obviously added to the band composition and not like a part of the composition, uh, I, I think. So depending on who we're talking about, obviously, and we've drawn, we've drawn a ton from those bands, but just that, that was our angle on it. It's like, let's build it all together. And uh, so, yeah, it took forever. We did like 16 or 17 songs, built them, built them, built them, built them for like a year. And that's when Reba and Shade, our my guitarists and keyboards, they, they got very, very good at like self-recording. And that's why a lot of the, stuff on the record a lot of the guitar leads are recorded you know into the box by uh them Re even reba just sitting there watching like mike dean videos on like pensado's place worrying about like like there was you know there would be like some kanye guitar lead and i'd be like this is like fucking majestical like uh i forget what the song was it was there was there's a song on jesus where there's like this direct in guitar and it has all this uh this reverb and it just sound, it sounds almost like 80s throwback but it also doesn't sound like anything that anyone in metal is doing and it sounds better and clearer so we're like okay how the fuck did he do that and we would watch youtube videos and learn how to make these chains and turn them and turn it into our totally own thing and there was all this back and forth of just learning and you know trying to grow uh, our skills other than just practicing which that, that was like a phase that happened before the real recording Mm -hmm. Then we we met with some people, we brought it to them, and again, it was cool because we were really in control the whole time. If anyone doesn't like this record or thinks this chorus is whack, I mean, this every single thing on this record, just like every band now, but is our 
it's our it's our choice it's it's exactly what we wanted to do and no one was pushing us one way or the other so i'm proud of that you know yeah shout out to uh shout out to mike dean who oh, yeah. uh, uh you know who i know uh, pops in from time to time checks out the content and uh you know it's cool to hear that he's inspired what you guys do and it is true you know going direct in uh these days you do a lot more than you used to be able to um yeah. and there's there's so many more options and you especially know, with leads man with guitar leads, it's like there's so much you could do. But what we, the problem we found when we got to the real record was when you fit a real hard live band that sounds the way we wanted it to, that sounds like the bands that we love, hard and real and raw, it's hard to fit that shit. That's why nobody does it. It's nearly impossible to hear. And that's why every song on this record had 25 mixes or something. Like, And that was one we had already kind of been mixing it as we went along. So fitting stuff and making things hearable so it's like almost like a – a chart from the highest high to the lowest low again the way that hip-hop music is more approached from talking to a lot of these guys and making mm -hmm. the band take up the meat of the middle so the rhythm hard guitars are still hard they're not direct they're recorded traditionally with things scooped out as other things come in you know so it was just a technical process that we had to learn and we also obviously the main goal was to make songs that we were like super excited to play and loved and covered these different grounds and you know so that's that was a little bit of the process, basically. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of what you're saying to me gives uh, some insight into the things I've been wondering about why more groups aren't, you know, sort of willing to make the sort of aesthetic and stylistic transitions that you guys have over the years. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it sounds like it's I mean, it sounds fun and exciting, but it also sounds like a daunting process because you're talking about things that for a band and for this genre that used to come so naturally that you know, to the point the technology has been built in such a way where you don't have to think about it anymore. You know, if you want it to sound hard and aggressive, you crank up the mic. I mean, uh, you know, you crank up the amp, you know, you throw a mic in front of it, you, you get the right distortion pedal, you get the right guitar tone, and then you guys just play like total fucking animals in the studio. Yeah. But now you're talking yeah. about taking that same energy and trying to compartmentalize it through, you know, synthesis and through, exactly. you know, through like a DAW you know, and through electronics. And it's like recreating that same sensation in such a methodical and, uh, you know, and, and also through an interface can be really difficult. I mean, it's possible. And obviously possible. Groups, in the past, groups and artists in the past have been doing, you know, people have been doing that shit since the 90s. And which is part of the reason why people refer to some of the stuff that you guys have been doing as like industrial metal. I mean, maybe yeah. it's not, you know, this, maybe, maybe it's not like, I want to say um, spiritually the same exact thing, but because of uh, the things that guys like Trent Reznor have pioneered, it sort of seems like the most. Oh yeah, of course. Quality, you know what I mean? They, they, people like you know, and even like even like Fear Factory and bands who are yeah, but Fear the way but Fear Factory approached it very differently. A lot of even Fear Factory's guitar sound and drum sound is very digital and very programmed in a lot of one, ways. One of my favorite when I was a big new metal fan back in the day in high school like i loved obsolete like obsolete was such that's a good, it's an awesome record i love it still that's, yeah that's, yeah that's it's hot and we you know but at the same time if you put that record on and again this is not a diss at all because i love that shit but it's it's thin and that yeah. was kind of what and that's what happens yeah and that's what our demos were mm -hmm. because when you when when you're trying to make heavy music Really hard, heavy music. And Nine Inch Nails is a good example, but Nine Inch Nails doesn't have full band hard parts that kick in with, again, like whatever you want to call it, chugging guitars and all this stuff that takes up so much room. They'll have one. And, you know, Chris Verena worked with us on this record. who worked mm -hmm. on the three. And, and so I asked him about that, and I wanted to know how he did it. And a lot of times it would be one guitar that was recorded digitally through, like, a purposely shitty, uh, like, 90s version of like a digital effects and that's not how we did it because we want the rhythm parts the hard parts to yeah feel more like a band in a room like a like a metal band in a room so i think that there's so much that we learned from all that but from from bands like that but i think that is the difference to me is especially when in the past now the technology exists to do what i think we did which is combine those two things Combine a band that re a really fully mic'd the drums with whatever 25 mics on them, the cabs the same way, the way you would do if you just had a 10-track band record, the way we did in the past, with this other world. It just takes a lot of, like you said, it's methodical, it's surgical. It has to be surgery. 
And there was, again, I don't know anyone who works harder than the, the people in my band. I'm not speaking for myself. Shade, Reba, the rest of them. I mean, it's all fucking day and night. And that's on top of them designing all of our merch designs, shipping all of our merch, all of our production, building our own stage stuff. Dom makes our clothes, a lot of them, like, sews and makes a lot of our clothes. So, I mean, it's like a commune, pretty much, you know? Like, And uh, <clears throat> I just think that the only way to get, get it done and, and make it sound like that is to just work on it literally every day for two years for 20 hours a day, and that's basically what we did. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 amazing that, uh, and and also uh, 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 something that I think a lot of people are oblivious to that uh, in in order to stay ahead these days, you really have to like wear so many different creative hats, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, not only does it mean your music gets done in a way where it stands out, but also you know, there are other characteristics of the uh, the group. You know, like you were saying, with the clothes sewing and everything that you know obviously goes into the visuals and goes into that's just uh, shit we're into trying to yeah. make stuff that looks sometimes like the fucking uh like i don't even know like i guess you could say like the designery kind of like the stuff that these guys are wearing yeah whatever but, <laughs> but whatever you want to call it but like we don't have any fucking money yeah and we and we like the look of stuff like that but don't i it's confusing to me why it's why it's that does not that you know so we just make it ourselves we'll take pictures of that stuff and he'll just our uh, dominic our guitarist is a really ta really talented at sewing and he'll just fucking make it so i mean it's, it's, it sounds like you guys need like a nike deal or an adidas deal we need an anything deal yeah somebody help us <laughs> no, sure. but we need a you know and not not even just like it's the it's it's all again it's all it's all influenced by the stuff we like visually and aesthetically and yeah we're a super aesthetically driven band but the art and music is our number one priority but what i miss about bands was bands that came with a full package that said this is what we are this is the vibe this is the art style this is the music and nowadays if you do that you get made fun of especially in metal and in rock and hard music it's not even, you know, it, it, everything's about being, you know, everything is, and I'm, I love it. And I think it's fun a lot of times, but everything's a meme, you know, everything's laughable, everything's terrifying and horrifying or funny. And we're, we're, we're breaking people down or it's just like, it's very sometimes confusing for, for me, you know? So we just try to tunnel vision, just present it the way we, we would want to see it and what we like, you know? And what 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 in your opinion and, and maybe this will be the last thing we we touch on uh, that you just mentioned uh uh what, what in your opinion is it that you end up getting made fun of for in, in the scene if if you're doing all those things that that you just said you're trying too hard or something or? yeah well no i mean again i mean like it doesn't it's not even i mean maybe i'm just speaking from our experience or whatever and there's yeah, things, yeah for, there's from things, your experience from your yeah experience. and there's things we put out and i get why it's i get why it's like that but uh yeah, yeah, just, I mean, anything we do a lot of times, there's going to be people saying, you take yourself too serious. You're trying so hard. You take yourself so serious. This is cringe. You know what I mean? And I get it. But it's just, it's hard to not be all those things at once. It's hard to be this perfect thing that people can't make fun of, but is also pushing things forward, but also has an aesthetic identity, but also is memorable and catchy and can, can you know, connect to, to more than just a niche but also, you, you doesn't get made fun of, and is playing it exa is right. I gave yeah, up on that so long ago. Act. It's a bouncing act, and it doesn't fucking matter, you know. What I mean, and at the end of the day, we well, we just present ourselves the way that we one are, and two, aesthetically, what we like. I mean, and you know, we we don't make bones about taking the art seriously. It doesn't mean we're not like we're we're so self serious. We don't joke around. We don't. You know, I actually think we're pretty good at taking like constructive criticism in terms of sometimes people will say stuff we don't cut everything out sometimes people will say stuff and i'll go okay like yeah you know we need to learn from that and grow from that but i think people want you to constantly be making fun of yourself or constantly uh making everything as light as possible and what we're doing isn't the art doesn't reflect that so we don't really reflect that you know no i mean that's that's just being consistent and these are dark times anyway so yeah. I mean, this fucking record, when this shit started to happen, I was like, this is insane. This is basically exactly what I'm saying on the whole record. And I'm just like, well, I mean, it, it, it seems like it was showing it, it was showing itself, obviously, in one way or another, that something was going to happen. 
And here we are. I'm, I'm scared here as we fuck. Are. Whatever. All right. Well, Jamie, thanks for coming on and uh, talking with us about the new record. The new Code Orange album underneath is out now. It's on streaming platforms. It's available physically as well. It's out on Roadrunner. So look it up. Seek it out. I'm going to try to obviously give my own thoughts on it this week as I have not spoiled the entire record uh, for myself yet. I wanted you to give me some, some insight into it before I finish the entire thing, but I'm excited to do that. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for the platform. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming on. Bye, dude. See you.